What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Stefan here from App Stuff, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over this amazing new feature that Apple just released in WWDC 23 called Swift Data. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start this video off guys, we are gonna do a brief introduction on what Swift Data is before we start with an example in Xcode. So Swift Data is essentially the new and improved version of core data. It gives us an API that makes persisting information in our apps easier than ever before. If you guys have ever worked with core data, you know it's an absolute nightmare. I hated it myself, I never wanted to use it. Swift Data makes all of those problems go away. So it's just gonna give us a really easy way to save or persist information in our applications. So let's go ahead and just jump right into Xcode, guys. We're gonna start off with a starter project and the link for that is in the description. So make sure you go ahead and download that now. And let's go ahead and see what it takes for us to implement Swift data into our applications and add this awesome persistence layer. So before we get started with our Swift data implementation, guys, I just want us to do a quick run through of the demo application. So we make sure we understand how everything's working, what the app does before we get started with implementing Swift data. So it's a pretty simple contacts application. It's just gonna display a list of contacts here. It's gonna display the person's team name or company name and we have the ability to add contacts as we can see here. So I could say like test driver test and then if I hit done, we'll notice that that adds that contact to my list at the bottom and I can also edit contacts and that functionality will work as well. So if I change Charles Leclerc to be on Mercedes and hit done, you notice that his team name updates right there. So it's a pretty simple application. Here's the problem though. If I were to close out of this application by killing it like this and I relaunch it, we notice that none of those changes persist. I don't see my test driver and I don't see that Char uh, Charles Leclerc's updated team name. And that's where Swift data is gonna come in, guys. It's gonna make it so that anytime we make changes or updates to our data, those changes will ultimately persist. So now let's go ahead and get started with what we need to do to actually start implementing Swift data to get that persistence layer added to our application here. So let's get started by hopping into our model folder and taking a look at our contact class. So this is the data model for our application here. This is what's being stored in this list that we see in the app. And it's a pretty straightforward model object. So we basically just store the first name, last name, and company of each individual contact. And then we also look at the date that they were last updated. And let's go ahead and see what we need to do to update this model object so that Swift data can store it for us. So let's go ahead and import Swift data up at the top. Then we just need to add this at model macro to our class definition, and that's literally all we need to do. Now the class is fully persistible with Swift data. It's literally that simple, guys. And what's even more awesome is that with the model macro, we get automatic conformance to the observable protocol. So we can remove all of this nasty observable object and publish property stuff. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what we're gonna do is delete this observable object conformance, and then we're also gonna remove all of these published property wrappers. So the reason that we had that observable object conformance and published properties was because our model object here was bound to our UI state inside of our edit contact view. So basically guys, what was happening was anytime I would modify this text, that is directly bound to my model object and would directly update my model object. That's why if I delete red out of, on Red Bull there and I hit done, we notice that it directly updates my model object. And we were doing that with the observed object conformance here. So we are gonna replace this with this new property wrapper called bindable. And this allows us to directly bind our models to our UI state here, so that when we update these text field properties, it will in turn directly update our model object the same way we did before, but now this is fully supported with persistence using Swift data. Ultimately, it's never been easier to bind our model's mutable state 
to our user interface or change our model state using our user interface in this way. It's so simple and it's so easy. So next up guys, what we need to do is actually query our data or fetch it from our data store to ultimately display in our list here. And then we're gonna go over how to save and update information in our data store. So before we proceed with how to fetch our data from our Swift data store, we have to add this bindable property to one more place in our application. So let's go inside of this contact row view guys, and we are still utilizing the observed object property wrapper here. If you were to try to build your project, you would note that you would notice that this would fail. So we have to replace this with bindable as well to make sure that this all works cohesively with our Swift data API. So next up, let's go back to our content view and talk about how we're displaying this contact data. So right now it's just utilizing this sample contacts that we have here. This is a structure and it is just some mock data. We obviously don't wanna do this. We wanna fetch our data from our local Swift data store. So this is actually gonna be super, super simple. We're just gonna import Swift data up at the top and we are going to replace state with this query property wrapper. And instead of initializing this using our sample contacts, guys, we're just going to cast this as an array of contacts here. And that's literally all we have to do to handle fetching our data using the Swift data API. This at query property wrapper here is going to do all of that work for us underneath the hood. And it also behaves the same way a state property does in that it triggers view updates on every time the model changes. So super simple, does a lot of stuff for us under the hood, and it keeps our code super light weight, which is awesome. So there's just a couple errors that we're gonna have to fix in order to make sure that our code is working with the new structure and the new setup that we have using Swift data. Before, this create contact view was taking on this contacts array as a binding so that we could add data to it from that, uh, that view. We no longer need to do that. So we can actually just delete that and we're gonna be able to utilize the Swift data APIs to add data from multiple surfaces in our application or update our data from multiple surfaces or places in our application, which is gonna be awesome. So let's go over to this create contact view now and we can remove this binding variable for our contacts. And then down here in our uh, done button action handler, we're gonna go over a different way of appending a new contact to our contact data structure using the Swift data API. So just go ahead and delete that line of code as well. So the last piece of this puzzle is gonna be setting up something called a model container, guys. And that's essentially gonna act as like our database. It's where all of our data is gonna get stored, where we're gonna fetch all of our data from, and where all of our data is gonna get saved when we update it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that's gonna look like. So this model container is gonna be a new view modifier that we have access to, and it's gonna look something like this. We literally just add it to any view, and we just need to declare the data type that we're setting up the model container for. So in this case, it's our contact. And basically it's just in charge of setting up the model container for the views data. To use Swift data, any app has to set up at least one model container. You need to set up some sort of database in order to use Swift data. That's how I like to think of it. And it basically is in charge of creating this like storage stack. So what exactly does that mean? Well, if we look at this diagram here, this is what it's gonna look like in the code. We're gonna apply this model container modifier on our app itself, right? So this is what you could kind of imagine the app would look like without the model container set up. And then once we set it up, you can imagine that now these child views of the main app itself can access that model container and add information to it, remove information from it, or update information within that model container itself. And we can also fetch information from that model container from these views. So because we set it up on the app layer, then we, every subsequent child view of the app or that the app itself creates, in this case, like view A and view B, we can access that model container. So let's go ahead and jump back into Xcode and actually get this set up. So um, on our app file, guys, we are gonna go here and we are, the first thing we need to do is import Swift data up at the top. And then we need to set up this model container here, guys. So we're gonna say dot model container for contact.self. So essentially what this is doing is we are setting up the container that is gonna hold all of our data and we're just setting the data type that it's going to contain, which is in, in this case, a contact. 
And if we go back to our contact class, because we use this model macro on our class definition, all of this works cohesively with the Swift Data API. So that model container is where we're gonna be fetching our information from, deleting information from, and updating our information, and it's all gonna be displayed in our list. So what we need to do next, the last piece of this puzzle is setting up a model context object. So that model context is gonna provide us with access to our model container. So basically think of that as a way to access our our data store. So the first place we're going to do that, guys, is inside of our create contact view. So we're going to go up to the top and we are going to create an environment variable. It's going to be dot model context. And we're going to say private var model context. And then down in our done button action handler, this is where we want to ultimately append a new contact or add a new contact to our data store, right? So we are gonna use this model context to access our model container. So we're just gonna go here, and this is super, super simple. We're just gonna say model context dot insert new contact. So that's as easy as it is to insert a new object into your model container through use of this environment variable with your model context. So they made this an environment variable so you can access it through multiple services in your application. So we're in the create contact view and we can access our model container through the, our, this model context guy here. And we're gonna see in just a second by going back to the content view, we're gonna use that to delete um, contacts from our model container as well. But really quickly, I just wanna see if this is working. So we're gonna run our application and we are actually gonna to try to add some contacts to our contacts list here. So I'm gonna go hit the plus button and let's see if I can add like Max Verstappen and say he's on Red Bull and that autocorrect is super annoying. So let's see, Max Verstappen and we hit done. And we notice guys that it shows up immediately in my list. So that's because we're using this query property wrapper here. And if you guys remember, I told you that was gonna handle fetching all of the information from our model container, which is exactly what it's doing. And it updates in real time, which is so, so cool. So let's go ahead and add one more guy. Let's see if we can add Lewis Hamilton and he's on Mercedes and hit done. And you guys will notice that that updates immediately there as well. And here is the coolest part about all this guys. If I completely close out the app, when we started this video, that list would remain blank or those updates wouldn't persist. And if we launch the app again, we notice that both of those contacts are still in my list, which is super cool. And we can also edit this stuff, right? Like let's say Lewis Hamilton's going to Ferrari, which I think he is, which is gonna be so cool. Let's hit done. And we notice that it updates there immediately as well. And once again, let's go ahead and close the app out relaunch it and we'll see that Lewis Hamilton is still on Ferrari. So the guys, that's so, so cool. We are using the Swift Data API completely to get persistence in our application. The last piece of this puzzle, I know I've said that like three times now, that's my bad, is to go over deleting a contact. So we're gonna add that model context here again. So I'm gonna create an environment variable and say dot model context, private var model context. And it's literally just gonna be one line of code to delete this stuff. So we're just gonna go ahead and say model context dot delete contact. And that's gonna be handled in our swipe animation. So guys, if we go ahead and run this, this is gonna bring this full circle and we'll have full CRUD operations, right? Create, update, delete. So now I can go ahead and give Max Verstappen a swipe and delete him. And now let's close out of the app and go ahead and relaunch it. And we'll see that Max Verstappen is no longer there. So that's not a knock. I love Max. Max is dope. He's a sick driver. But um, I'd rather delete him over Lewis. But anyway, guys, uh, that's going to really wrap it up for this uh, Swift data tutorial. This new feature is absolutely incredible. And it gives us a really, really easy way of integrating persistence into our applications. And it integrates seamlessly with Swift UI. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I got a lot more videos coming out with some of the new features that were launched in WWDC 23. So look forward to seeing you guys there. Peace out.